and welcome to the Spiritual and Empowerment Living with Tia podcast, a sacred place and resource for spiritually centered women who want to go from the mundane to the magical life for overcoming fear and doubt, reconnecting with the goddess, understanding messages from spirit, and uncovering your spiritual gifts so you can finally live the life you deserve. All right, spiritual trailblazer, here we are back again, and it's Thanksgiving. Where did the year go? It's a crazy year, to say the least, Uh, and time flies regardless. I feel like no matter what, it's January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, (laughs) just regularly. Now with this pandemic, it gets a little bit crazier, which is why I wanted to have this bonus episode. I I try to recall, I don't think I usually do Thanksgiving episodes. I just, I just can't recall. So I figured, you know what, let's, let's focus a little bit on some of the things we are thankful for. And I know some people have their objections and they don't want to acknowledge this day I get it, but it's been just such a crazy year. Let's just take a moment to take a breath to just focus on some of the things we are grateful for to make it to this day and this year and this point of our lives. Let's just take a few steps back today. All right. So before I dive into this, I just want to give you a few reminders. If you haven't already, check out the previous episode starting at the finish line with Matt Newman. He was an amazing guest. I read his book. Book is phenomenal. If you ever need a surge of inspiration, read this book. One of the most beautiful things about his book is that he didn't write it for it to be a book. (laughs) He wrote it to help him get through cancer. Okay. So it was like another way to help him get through this. He was just journaling really. And it ended up becoming a book. So I really encourage you to listen to that episode, get his book and read it like in its entirety, please. There are so many great nuggets in there. I can't even begin to tell you. And that book was, that book has a special place in my heart because I experienced watching my grandmother slowly die from cancer. And he talks about, you know, seeing his family members uh, pass from that and and how that really changed his life. And, And anyway, Listen to the episode is powerful and also it's a little bit um, interesting just as a side note because he's the first guy that been on the show in a very long time. So it was nice to have that male energy uh, there. So definitely check it out. Great guest, great story, great book. Uh, next, make sure you check out this week's blog post, Magical Day of the Week Friday. Uh, That was a really fun post. Uh, So make sure you check it out because each day of the week has its own correspondences and it really helps us to understand why we feel the way we do on certain days. Yes, there's the, the, in a way, collective feeling, thank God it's Friday, you know, uh, it's payday Friday, it's the weekend, but there's a magical component to Friday. Okay. And like I said in previous episodes, there are so many energies swirling around us that really impacts us. So it's really good to understand that and understand ways we can really benefit from tapping into that energy uh, than, this, than just being a person going on about our day and not understanding the energies, you know, because we already are in it a little bit. So it's best to just take advantage of it in a good way. 
So go ahead and go to blind.tamariejohnson.com and check out Friday. And of course, check out the previous days. Check out Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. All right. There are two more days left after this is Saturday and Sunday. So it's, it's almost complete, but check it out. And last but not least, make sure you connect with me on my Instagram page at uh, cosmic underscore witch underscore goddess. I recently changed it to reflect the new brand. I mean, I'm still Tia Johnson, but uh, it's it, it just felt like I needed to change it. And so I did. And also, these prompts I'm going to give you, there are 10 of them to ease your mind. When this is all done, you can go to tiamariejohnson.com forward slash gratitude now, and you can download the PDF of this, okay? I just want to have a conversation about this up front, and then you can go download the PDF later. You can print up, write on it, or, you know, just open up as a PDF and just hit add text and put in your information there. Before I get into these 10 prompts, questions. I want you to remember, this is with any holiday, anything you ever see about anybody doing something, it's what you make it, period, okay? There was a a recent um, comment made about being mindful of how you celebrate these upcoming holidays, I'm not going to get too specific uh, because it's not really worth it, but I wanted to address it briefly here because you can't worry about how someone else is going to feel based on what you do. Meaning, if you want to take a picture with your immediate family, you know, you're just, you're at home for Thanksgiving. And so it's you and the people in your house and you're just like, Hey guys, you know, this is a real crazy time, but we're thankful to be with each other right now. We're, we're thankful that, you know, we had technology to do the zoom and, you know, my parents are home, but the, the new way we're handling this is FaceTime and zoom and, and we're eating at the same time, different households, same time. I'm thankful for that. Now, where some people get a little bit sad, probably it's not your responsibility to think about that, okay? Because the comment was in regards to basically be mindful of your, your the, the joy that you're about to experience. Like, don't publicize it too much and things like that. Here's, again, here's the thing. You don't know what anyone triggers are, okay? And I had this conversation years ago when I was in high school. This one girl hated Valentine's Day, couldn't stand it. And really because she didn't have a boyfriend. So I, I just said, it's not the holiday you hate. It's that you want a, you want a guy, you want a boyfriend. And, you know, she admitted it to me, but, you know, she had the front of the facade of, oh, you know, it's a stupid commercial holiday. It's not even real, blah, blah, blah. Duh. (laughs) No one needs a holiday to tell someone that they love them. You don't have to wait for February the 14th to give someone a gift, you know, duh. (laughs) Okay. You can't worry about what may trigger someone, even if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving but maybe you just don't want to be alone. So you go over someone's house for a feast, even if you don't celebrate Christmas, but you like the lights, you like the music, you like the the cocoa with the marshmallows and you like the, the Christmas movies because it's magical. And, you know, someone finds love and a golden retriever is usually involved. <laughs> okay. You can like holidays for different reasons. Okay. It's what you make it. But please do not dim your light because it may offend someone. It may, tr- you don't, again, you don't know what's going to trigger someone. Mother's Day can trigger someone. You posting pictures of your child can trigger someone who is trying to conceive. You never know. And it's not your job to focus on that. 
your job is to make sure you secure your happiness, you maintain your happiness. So if you want to post a picture, you want to create an album on Facebook so you can remember it the following year, like, whew, you know, made it, do it. Okay. I just want to put that out there before we even get to the questions. Okay. You have every right to express yourself, period. None of these holidays are commercialized unless you make it. You don't have to buy into it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Number one, what are you thankful for? It's a loaded question. You don't have to write it all out. You could just think about it. But it's good if you write it all out because one day you're going to find it and you're going to think, oh my gosh, I am so blessed. I am so wealthy and abundant. Wow. It's so interesting because I see many Instagram posts that state, if you have a roof over your head, if you have running water, if you have food in your, in your refrigerator, if you have people who love you, you're wealthy. Isn't that crazy? I love how we can add our own definitions to words like wealth and abundance and prosperity. Great. It's all, it, that adds to what you make it, even success, right? We get to define that now. Perfect. What are you thankful for? And listen, we're going to go through the who, what, when, where, why, how. <laughs> okay. I tell you, I'm grateful for technology. I am connecting with people in over 40 countries. When I look at the stats for this podcast, 40, over for like 45 countries. People in 45, from 45 countries are listening to this podcast. I am connecting with you. You are connecting with me. That's crazy. So yeah, I'm thankful for technology. I'm thankful that you are giving me the most precious commodity. Well, second, your life is very precious, but your time, right? You are listening to me. You are giving me your time. I'm thankful for that. I am thankful for so many things, but I want to express those two, those two things because, again, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole. It's going to make this episode <laughs> longer than it has to be. <clears throat> who are you grateful for? Number two, who are you grateful for? I just said I'm grateful for you, your time. Who 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 are the, the VIPs in your life? Who who are the people that, you know, they still text you to see how you're doing people who you can just watch TV with, or get a cup of coffee with, go to the supermarket. Who are you grateful for in your life? And number three, this is a little bit of flipping a coin here. Who is not expressing their gratitude towards you. Now I put this in here because This is the time of of the year where we are about to transition into winter. And winter is a time of death, uh, hibernation, inner reflection, right? And then spring is birth, renewal, newness, all that. If you have friends around you, people around you who are not appreciating you, it's time to start phasing them out. And I understand some people, you can't get out your life, like in-laws, certain family members, but you can spend less time around them. You can give less of your energy to them. You know, you just got to lessen it for the people who you can't quite get rid of in your life. <laughs> but for those who you can, the ungrateful friend, the ungrateful coworker, you know, maybe you can look at changing positions at work, working in a different department. You know, who is not expressing their gratitude towards you? As my grandmother said many years ago, people take your kindness for weakness, right? 
So I, I learned that and I had to adjust how I work in life, right? I'm a generous person, but I put a cap on it. And the VIP people in my life, my generosity has no limits. And, and I mean that. And some people, you get a cap. You put a cap on that generosity, right? Because it needs it. You're not appreciative. You try to take advantage. Take, take people for granted, right? So think about that. Who are the people that don't appreciate you? Now I do a little bit of self-reflection here because, like I said, we we are approaching winter in just a few weeks, and that's a time we can clean house too. We don't have to wait for spring to do spring cleaning. Some some friendships, relationships are going to die out in the winter. Okay, moving right along. Number four, how far? have you come right we are in the second to last month of the year i want you to write your accomplishments i want you to write what you made it through this year because that's something to be grateful for too and sometimes we overlook that i know everyone has their point where it's just like oh my god when is this going to end I've been in the house for X amount of months. This is like, I'm about to hit my point. Okay. (laughs) So think about how far you've gotten. All right. Think about that. Really think about that for a minute. Okay. We all are adjusting ourselves to this time. Okay. We all are impacted some way, shape or form. And, and I'll, I'll actually share this with you. A, a friend of the family, longtime friend of the family passed away from COVID-19. And we couldn't go to the funeral. You know, it, and it really, it upset my mom because that was someone who she grew up with. Okay. And uh, I, I, I'll just, just leave it at that. But um, it's, it's, just, it's, it's, uh, it's a time of great emotions. Okay, so really just think about for a moment how far you have come, okay, during this time, especially during this time. Uh, Number five, what would you like to see happen in your life? And this is something to get you to look forward towards something, right? No matter what, 2021 will come, 2022 will come, no matter what change will happen things will happen right and we're going to eventually rise to the occasion okay we we are going to get through this and i'm not saying it's going to be super easy okay yeah we're all going to have our points where you know we're feeling one way we're feeling another way we're just okay all right but just think about for a moment what would you like to see happen in your life? I'm telling you, there are a lot of things I like to see happen in my life, and I cannot wait for them to manifest. And when they do, I'm going to share it with you, and I'm going to share the process that led up to that before, during, after. Trust me, I will do this. But for now, I'm just keeping it to myself. But there are there are several things I'm working on, and and looking forward to happening in my life. It gives me even more hope. It helps me to re- keep focus, you know, even though, you know, we, we may veer to the left or the right, but it, it helps me get back on track. And also it reminds me that no matter what I do, that's going to be an inspiration to someone, especially when I share it, right? We never know who we're helping. Truly, we don't. There are some people who a- admire from afar, you know, for whatever reason. So I always encourage people, you know, do that thing you think is crazy, that, that's a little bit out your comfort zone, because you are an inspiration to someone, whether you believe it or not, trust me. And sometimes you may never know. I, I always tell this story, quick side note, 
about when I was in physical therapy for my foot and uh, one of the assistants to the therapist was telling me he worked at the beneficiary office at the VA, which stands for uh, Veterans Affairs. And he was telling me, you would be surprised, surprised how many people loved someone from afar and that person never knew. They would leave them all their money, their possessions, and a letter explaining how they love them, you know, all that jazz. And the person never knew for whatever reason. That per- Sometimes people are just shy. Sometimes people just whatever. Okay. You never know. You never know. So I encourage you. I implore you, you know, to really focus on what would you like to see happen in your life and start following through with that because it really truly is a domino effect. All right. Now, why are you feeling the way you do? Sometimes people get a little bit uncomfortable expressing gratitude. Because some people have different notions about, you know, I I don't want too many blessings. I don't want to be too happy because that means something bad is going to happen right after that. You know, and sometimes TV programs don't help. You you know, you see people who have a lot. They have big homes, big bank accounts, many cars, and yet they still have unnecessary drama, right? And you know what I'm talking about. Unnecessary drama. There's always some type of drama going on. Oh, he cheated. Oh, she betrayed me. It's like you're dating toxic people. (laughs) Like, You're jealous, you're hateful, you're vengeful, and you're you're masking that, right? You're just you're just generally not a happy person and you're not doing things that would lead to you being happy. You're again dating toxic people and you're expecting a change to happen. Or you're just, you know, putting other people down. You're doing all these crazy things where you really should be chilling because you got money and the cars and the house and the big bank. And so sometimes people see that and they look and say, see, money doesn't make you happy. No, the person doesn't make themselves happy and money amplifies that because now they have even more space, more of a platform to take up to amplify what's going on inward or it was going on inside and it's showing externally. So it kind of messes it up for people. I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be that way. Okay. It's okay for you to feel grateful. It's okay for you to receive gratitude from someone else. Okay. If someone says, man, I'm so thankful you're in my life. I don't know where I would be if you weren't there. You know, you you would feed me when I had a little bit of food in my refrigerator. You helped me get that job. You know, you you gave me some money so I can go to the interview because my car broke down. I had to get Uber or whatever. You know, accept the gratitude, okay? But also feel good about that because, well, you deserve it. So how does being being in that vortex of gratitude make you feel? Every time I focus on what I'm thankful for, I feel even more whole, more wholesome. I just feel like a surge of energy. I feel supported. I just feel good. I feel like I, I just have like this barrier around me that no one can mess up. And I love it. So really think about why you feel the way you do regarding gratitude. And if you feel not so good about it, maybe you have to go back to, well, what's the number? Number three, who is not, who are the people who aren't expressing gratitude towards you? Like who are the people who are not appreciating you? Because it could be a little bit of resentment there. It could be, oh, you know, Gratitude, I don't, I don't really feel that because I feel like I don't have anything to be grateful for and all the other stuff. Yeah, you do. Number one, you're alive. 
Number two, you know, think about your faculties. Can you go to the bathroom on your own? Are you breathing on your own? Do you have sight? Okay. Can you walk without crutches or wheelchair or anything? You know, think about some of these things. Okay. And if you do have, uh, you know, like something going on, you know, just think about other things that you're grateful for. And I say that because uh, I, I've seen people whine and, and this isn't geared towards anyone, you know, uh, personally here listening, but I have seen people whine about things that if someone else in a, in a, in the actual bad predicament saw them slap them in the face, I would just say they needed that wake up call. I, I've seen people I seen someone, for example, bitch about not getting coffee. Like, oh, I just need my coffee. I just had to. D- d- d-. I'm thinking to myself, wow, you are really flipping out like that. Like that's the thing that, and I get it. I love coffee too, but to act like, you know, like I can't possibly, I need it. Like, wait a minute, just be grateful that you know you woke up this morning like you're not going to get everything all the time you know like sometimes you're on a time constraint you know like there there are some some times where you know you got to catch a plane like we can't stop right now we got to go you know and some people they're just like I don't care I need to get this I I don't care it's like wow that that's what you want to complain about there are people and again this isn't about comparing it's about understanding priorities perspective and how you act okay like i said you know there are some times where like yeah man i would love to have a cup of coffee but i can't stop like i have things to do like i have to wait later and that can also be a good thing like maybe something happens and i dodged it because it was like hey no you can't stop right now you gotta go right so just, you know, when people try to complain about things, it's like, mm, that ain't it. <laughs> All right. So uh, next, number seven, when do you feel grateful? Now, this is, this is going to be a, another loaded question because is it um, when you by yourself, when you're with people? Like when? When is it? In the morning, in the afternoon? When do you feel like you're in that space of like, man, I'm happy to be here. Like, yeah, this is it right here. And today could be the day. Like, I'm so grateful to be spending time with my family. I'm so grateful that you know we are here and we get to you know, eat this food, we having conversations, we're watching football, at least in America, <laughs> you know, like, what are some of the things you're grateful for? I mean, I'm sorry, when, when did you feel grateful? Like, I, I feel grateful at different times throughout the day. There are other times where, you know, it's life <laughs> and you're just in like a little like mm, mood, but I feel grateful when I'm on the phone with my project manager. She's so awesome. And it's just like, that's a time when I feel grateful. When we have our calls, um, I feel grateful when um, I am at the nail salon because my nail technician is awesome. And her work schedule got turned upside down because of COVID. So I like when I go there because... I feel like, you know, as her client, I'm showing up for her, you know, and I tip her even more now, you know, because her hours got cut. So I'm grateful that I can show up. I'm grateful that I still have money so I can show up for her and tip her, right? That's when I feel grateful. I feel grateful when I can help someone else. That's also when I feel grateful. I feel grateful that I'm in a position that I can do that, if that makes sense. I'm grateful when I'm around other people. 
you know, who also helped me too, because sometimes I can't put shit together (laughs) and I had to, you know, give people pieces of the puzzle and like, here, help me. Like I said, um, sometimes I really just can't figure something out and I'll call my best friend. I'm just saying really a bunch of words and she puts it together. That's when I'm grateful too. (laughs) Someone who understands Tia language. Okay. So when do you feel grateful? Um, that's number seven. Number eight, we're now this has, uh, more to do with like a who, um, like a who and, and, a and a why, so to speak. So where do I feel grateful? I gave you an example. My gym doesn't have this open now, but when it did, I was grateful where I feel grateful is at the gym when after I work out, I'm in the steam room and then I get in the whirlpool. Not only does it help my joints, but it cleanses my mind in a way. I can't quite explain it, but the steam room is, I love it because the light is dim or sometimes like a blue light and it's just steam. So you can't even see other people in the room at times. You're taking deep breaths. Okay. And then like I sit on the top level and I lay down my towel and I have, so I get several towels. They're very long and I I roll one up. So like a pillow and then I get a face towel just to dab my face because, you know, the sweat starts to drip down and things like that. And it's annoying when it's like the little sweat droplet on your nose and stuff. So I have it on my face. That's where I'm grateful because I get to be in my space and not even so much with my thoughts. It's like, there's just nothing. I'm just there. And I'm, I'm really by myself. Like, yeah, there there are other women here sometimes, but it's, it's a personal private space that just allows me to melt away things. I mean, it could easily be the shower too. And with the whirlpool, Again, it's something, so the steam room is more of a fire energy for me because it's heat, even though, yeah, it's water, but it's more like evaporating and stuff like that. And the whirlpool, the jets are going, my foot is a little sore. And for those of you who are new to this podcast, I have a lot of foot issues, multiple surgeries, there's metal in my foot. And now I've been actually recently diagnosed with nerve pain. So when I work out, uh, it's bittersweet because I can do it, but then my foot gets really swollen. So I have to wear a particular sneaker, particular low top sneaker. And I can't really be consistent with the gym at times because I just get these flare ups. So when I'm in my, when I'm in the whirlpool and my foot's a little sore, but the jets are going, the water's hot. It's a very sacred space. It's just like, okay, Tia, you did the work, you're working on being fit, let the water take over to add, it's nurture green, you know, that, that's part of what I like water, it also gives life, like we need water for life, but it's something about the whirlpool, the jets, the heat, the water that just relaxes me. And I do like neck exercises and I'm sitting like my whole body, like up to my neck is in, it's only three feet of water. I'm five foot six. I can stand up. It's not a problem, but I just make sure I sit all the way down. So like I'm doing a squat sometimes I'll do a little motion with my foot. You know, anyone who's been in physical therapy with their feet, no, you do the alphabet. So you're spelling the alphabet out and I would, I would spell it out in English and I do the military alphabet and then like French, I'm a little bit rusty with my French. I have to spell it out. So I'm doing alphabet times three, a little rotation, stuff like that. It just, oh, it just helps. That's where I'm grateful. That's where I am so grateful because now my body has a chance to get that nourishment, that relaxation, and also it's like melting away mentally of things. So where do you feel grateful for you? You may feel grateful at a library because, you know, you love books and you get to absorb as much knowledge as possible. Maybe 
you feel grateful where um, it's like a den in your house, the kitchen, because you're cooking up stuff for people. You know, there's a lady uh, in, in, in my neighborhood in Philadelphia, almost every week, okay, she bakes. And uh, most of the proceeds go towards uh, a different organization. She does. So, you know, she does like her like delivery fee, whatever. And then uh, most of the money and she posts what gets delivered, you know, like the, the funds and everything to a different organization each week. That's probably where she feels grateful. You know, her, her sacred space is the kitchen, you know, and and now I'm I'm actually grateful for her because I got banana bread coming. <laughs> well, at the time of this recording, there's banana bread coming my way. Um, so that's probably where she's feeling grateful that she is giving people food, but also donating money to a cause. So it's like times two or times three because she's getting her nourishment of her soul while she's doing it. All right. And so the win for me is just to like a quick recap, because th- these could be interchangeable when and where, but uh, the way I was defining it was the win was more so like an interaction with people as opposed to the who, which is just a person. Like I was saying earlier, number two is who are you grateful for a person? When is that interaction? Like I said, me and my nail technician, me and my project manager, me and my best friend, and then the where is is a place. It's like your your place, right? Okay. Number nine. We're almost done. How can you be even more grateful? Like, how can you be in that vortex of gratitude? Like, what is it? Is it reading a book about gratitude? Is it daily prompts? You know, like today I'm grateful for, and you can write it at the end of the end of the day, or you can just think about it. Like today I'm grateful that I had a great conversation with the old friend who I haven't talked to in a while. Today I'm grateful that I took a break and went for a walk and I just turned my phone off. Okay. How how can you ante up being grateful? Because I'm gonna tell you something. The more you are grateful for something the universe sees that and gives you even more. It's just like, think about it. A mentor, a professor, a teacher, anyone, when you say thank you, when you show your gratitude, what do they do? They give you even more things, right? They might tell you, hey, between you and me, no problem. I threw in a little extra for you, right? This happens to me so many times. And I'm not going to say like exactly what, when, who, where, and why, because I'm going to respect people's privacy, you know, but so many times throughout my life, it always been, ah, you're good Tia. Don't worry about it. And I get self-conscious about it. I'm like, I don't want anybody to think I'm taking advantage of them, but it's just because I just express my gratitude. I'm authentic. I listen, you know, like I just, I'm, I'm being me, but I understand I was raised you know, to respect people, to listen and things like that. But also it's like, I genuinely care, (laughs) you know, I want to understand and I want to uh, give credit where credit's due. And I want to tell people, hey, you're doing a great job. I really appreciate you. Like, hey, I don't have all the answers. Hey, I don't always know what I'm doing. You know, I'm piecing piecing stuff together more times than not. And I'm grateful that you understand Tia language. I'm grateful that you understand that this is not my strong point. I'm grateful that you took care of that thing because I'm overwhelmed. Thank you. Okay. And just, just being genuine like that, just again, telling people, Hey, I don't have all the answers. I'm not always put together (laughs) being real. That's what gives you that return. But again, it has to be real, right? Forget trying to look and be perfect. Make that for Instagram. You know, when you want to get on face, I'm about to say auto tune, <laughs> face tune and, you know, the filters and all that, you know, do that there, do that for movies and stuff like that. But you don't have to be perfect in actual life. Okay. So, you know, when you do that, people want to do more for you because people like being appreciated, period. Okay, so how can you up the ante with being grateful? 
that so much so that the universe sees that and grants you even more, more than you can even imagine. And finally, number 10, what does gratitude look like for you? Now, we talked about, you know, grateful for a person, you know, places and things. But I really want you to visualize this. The sh- one of the strongest magic you can use is visualization, right? The strongest magic is love, right? Nothing trumps love. But visualization is right up there, right? Because you can visualize it. You can see it, feel it, smell it, taste it. You know, like, what, the, what would it taste like? What would it feel like? What, like, all of that, it becomes real. Your brain doesn't know the difference. Studies have shown that. There were uh, athletes, they were um, studying who were, for, who were training for the Olympics. So they're, they're Olympians or training for the Olympics. And I don't know exactly how they did this study, but they're, they like hooked them up, you know, everything like that. And they told the athletes to like run as if you're going to run in the Olympics, like, you know, do, do all these things as if you were boom, dead in center right there, trying to go for the goal. Your body, your brain doesn't know the difference. Okay. Which is a little side note, which is one of the reasons why I really like to entertain that there's really like time isn't linear. You know, we can, we do past life regression. We do so many things, look forward, tap into, you know, um, uh, you know, like being clairvoyant and seeing things beginning, you know, future and past and stuff like that. That's a side note. One of the reasons why I'm all for understanding and on board with time is not linear. Okay. But just think about that. What does gratitude look like for you? Is it you being surrounded with friends and family and you're laughing it up or now, you know, maybe virtually, you know, you guys are just talking and you're joining each other's company and you're not even doing anything crazy special. Maybe you got a bonfire going, right? And you're just enjoying people's company. I can't even begin to tell you. Some of my most fondest memories are just being with my friends, no matter where we are. People ask me, oh, you know, like you travel so many places in the world. What's your favorite spot? I said, anywhere where I'm with my friends and a drink in my hand. Seriously, seriously. I don't care where I'm at. When I'm around people who I know love me and I love them, that feeling's mutual, it doesn't matter where I'm at. It literally doesn't matter. Like I, I went to Iceland, it's cold. <laughs> like we had to put the the spikes on our shoes. Like I don't even care for the cold, but I love Iceland. That was a, listen, I, I will literally live in Iceland. Like I loved it. But also it was the people who I went with made it that much better. Okay. So for me, one, uh, one way uh, gratitude or one way I would envision gratitude, like being more in that space, is just being around the right people. Good food, good drinks, dance party, uh, you know, reminiscing, you know, making plans for the future, you know, all, just that. That's my one of my gratitude vortexes. That's what gratitude would look like for me. Just building upon even more the foundation of friendships, relationships, you know, just adding more bricks to the layers, right? That's irreplaceable to me. I, I, that's it. Just irreplaceable. Like I said, it doesn't matter where I'm at with, as long as I'm with my friends and drinking my hand. <laughs> right so what does it look like for you um another another way uh, i like to visualize gratitude is you know reading up on something i have interest in and you know have like maybe a coffee and and a danish or tea or you know a pepsi and you know just something like that and just relaxing and reading and no one's bothering me i'm just going down that rabbit hole of knowledge. I'm so grateful for that. It's so comforting to do that. Okay. So think about that. All right. Recap, like rewind. Don't forget, go to timmariejohnson.com forward slash gratitude now to get this download. And here are the 10 questions. What are you thankful for? Who are you grateful for? 
who is not expressing their appreciation for you? How far have you come? Uh, what would you like to see happen in your life? Why are you feeling the way you do about gratitude? When do you feel grateful? Where do you feel grateful? How can you be more grateful? And what does gratitude look like for you? Happy Thanksgiving. And again, as a reminder, is what you make it. These hol- holidays, life on a larger scale, it's what you make it. You get to define it. Not not big business, not someone on the internet. You. Okay? I'm sending you so many blessings. You know I'm always rooting for you. Remember to be kind to yourself. And I'll talk to you next time. As always, Spiritual Trailblazer, thank you for tuning in. Do make sure to stop by and visit me at tiamariejohnson.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Last but not least, be kind to yourself. I'm rooting for you. And I'm sending you so many blessings. Until next time.